right. if it's a gradient, then like you're saying, how does that maintain a pressurized? It doesn't system? maintain right. a pressurized system, and so you go yeah. from a positive pressure to negative pressure, and you can't have those juxtaposed without a barrier. So either right. we have to believe in a barrier or this this magical magical uh, gradient space in the atmosphere voodoo. That's yeah, it's and atomic he, voodoo. This person I was talking to yeah. started to bring up, well, it's at an atomic level. And it's I'm like, "Oh, wow. Voodoo. So it's all tied back to that as well, the atomization yeah. of material reality." That's exactly right. Right? And it's incredible. Yeah. I mean, atomism is is really the foundation of most of the modern materialist and esoteric materialist dogma, and that includes astrophysics. I mean, it really goes back to Democritus and the idea that, oh, well, we can reduce reality down to its smallest uh, indivisible part, that, you know, all reality could crumble into or, or out of a um, singular substrate. Right, and that's um, that's a pure belief system, but that's supposedly the entire basis for the best kind of science that's ever emerged. And I, it's um, it's very fascinating times we're in, kind of ominous, but I mean, truly, truly worthwhile in investigating. It's 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 truly amazing. You got to proceed by inquiry. That's right. Um, which is the Zetitic newscast mantra and how we ask all of our listeners and readers to proceed. Um, so I want to play, yeah. you know, just one more uh, dagger in the heart of the climate change alarmist, the climate change uh, the, a, a priest of apocalypticism, radical environmental scientism. And yeah. um, you know, this 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 is. Uh, a clip by John Coleman. He's now deceased, but um, you, you'd think people who cl proclaim to be, you know, sort of uh, people of science, believers in science, you might say, uh, would listen to the founder of the Weather Channel on this subject of climate. And I just thought he did a pretty good breakdown of some of the like base level illogicalities of. Mm -hmm. The climate alarmism, and uh, I think um, we'll probably end on this yeah. particular clip. Hello, I'm John Coleman, founder of the Weather Channel, original weatherman on Good Morning America, and a TV meteorologist for 55 years. I love this blue marble, our home, but we're isolated out here in space, and we human beings have a big responsibility. The future of this planet is in our control. Over the last 30 years, we have been told over and over again that we are destroying the climate of this planet through our use of fossil fuels by leaving our carbon footprints. The CO2 is destroying the climate of this planet. We're told it is causing uncontrollable warming, and the results, we're told, is disaster looming in the very near future. Over and over again, we've been told how the ice will melt and the polar bears are going to die, how the coast will be flooded as the oceans rise, some islands totally wiped out, how powerful hurricanes are going to hit the shore, how millions will die as heat waves sweep the planet, carrying disease that will kill millions more, and our crops will fail, and we, our civilization, will perish. All because we are using fossil fuels and leaving our carbon footprints. We're told that by running our television sets and our cars and trucks and airplanes, burning our electric lights, running heating and air conditioning, computers and cell phones, that we are destroying the climate on planet Earth. And we say, our carbon footprints, are they really doing this? The carbon dioxide that comes out the exhaust of our automobiles and out of the smokestacks of our power plants, the entire global warming frenzy is based on that carbon dioxide increase from the burning of fossil fuels. And how could that be? Isn't CO2 a natural gas that we breathe out? Isn't CO2 a gas that plants need to grow? Hasn't CO2 always been in the atmosphere? Isn't it just a trace gas that is uh, just a fraction of the atmospheric content? Yes to all of those questions. But that very CO2, Al Gore tells us, is fueling global warming that will destroy the climate of planet Earth. And in its reports, 
the United Nations Intergovernmental on Panel on Climate Change has told us over and over again how this greenhouse effect is going to create destruction. They call it radiative forcing. The CO2 will, through this formula, have a, an impact on water vapor that greatly magnifies the greenhouse effect. And that radiative forcing, we are told, will create all of this climate frenzy. Let's go back and look at the big picture. The Earth's been around for a long, long time. We have records that go back for 300 million years and more. We see interglacial periods. That's the warm spell, nature's global warming. Uh, when human life flourishes, plants and animals grow, life is good. And ice ages, when we almost all perish, when the Earth becomes a huge ice cube. And those have altered through all history. We have had a, a, a consistent record of ice ages followed by interglacial periods, nature's global warming. The burning of fossil fuels didn't cause any of those. So we can see that temperatures and CO2 content of the atmosphere have both increased and fallen over hundreds of thousands, millions of years without causing any catastrophe and without being the result of the activities of man. Now I'm going to come up to just this interglacial period, which began about 10,000 years ago when the Ice Age ended. And during this interglacial period, we've had some very dramatic warm spells and some cool snaps. The most recent cool snap being the Little Ice Age. And then here's the warm-up that followed uh, the use of fossil fuels. Notice it's no more dramatic than the warm-ups that preceded it. So how could that one be caused by fossil fuels? The, it didn't cause, fossil fuels didn't cause any of these others. How come we're told it's causing this rise? Civilization's only been burning fossil fuels here, starting around 1800 and up to today. Gas, oil, and coal have caused the carbon dioxide to increase in the atmosphere, no question about that. And here's the temperatures through that period. And there's been an increase of slightly more than one half of one degree since 1880. Nothing very dramatic, but the IPP says that these rises aren't natural, but they're the result of our burning of fossil fuel. We skeptics, we say these are right in step with the temperature pattern that has occurred all these years. And I point to this, from 1940 to the mid-70s, during a period of the post-war boom when industrialization and the use of fossil fuels was increasing rapidly, the temperatures stayed steady. They weren't linked to the fossil fuels at all. So here's the increase of fossil fuels. Here's the pattern of temperatures in the blue line. And it is closely linked not to fossil fuels, but to the solar activity, the rise and fall of the number of sunspots and solar flares. Now, the IPPC ran its computer models. That's all it had to try to justify and prove the authenticity of its theory or hypothesis about radiative forcing and CO2 causing global warming. And they showed a warm up, but that has failed. Now look what's happened. While CO2 continues to rise in this new century, this is 2002, this is 2008, through this period, temperatures have stayed steady or even significantly declined in the last several years. So that absolutely blows that prediction, the CO2 prediction of the IC, IPCC out of the water. Here are their computer model predictions. Here's the temperature performance. I'm afraid their hypothesis has been proven wrong in only a few years. And to me, that seems to be the end. The hypothesis is dead. It's time to stop talking about it. And then came about Thanksgiving time, the release of all those emails from the um, Hadley Center in Europe in England, which showed how the data had been manipulated and how ma amazing the performance was by those scientists to try to keep the warming going even though it wasn't happening. And they even continued to release scary reports uh, right during that period. That's shocking. The truth is that the ice at the North Pole has fallen off and has started to rise again. This year, 2009, greater than 2008 or 7. And as for the prediction of stronger hurricanes, you know we had a very quiet year in 2009. Not a single significant hurricane occurred.